Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this quick guide on how to get started in StarMade. So we have just spawned uh, freshly on a new server. This is actually single player, but servers, single player, they're all the same. Um, we have limited credits. Uh, this is the settings that we have on StoneLegion.com server. And uh, here we're just going to get started. So when you first get into the game, you start at a shop and you can move with your WASD keys. This is a shop. You can actually access a shop by hitting B and you can see some information here. Um, I think you might even be able to talk to that guy that just disappeared. Oh, no. Oh, there he is. Hi. Oh yeah, talk to. There you go. I need information. I want to hire a crew. Can I do a quest? Uh, I don't think you can do a lot of those things yet, but the, there's some like future infrastructure there. So when you first get started in the game, usually the first thing you want to do is hit X. X lets you place your ship core, and if you look in your inventory hitting I, you'll see you have a ship core. The ship core means everything in this game. So when you hit X, you can name your ship like Kane Start, and you can go OK. And it'll take a second to appear, and then this is your ship core. Your ship core, uh, usually the first time you go in, you hit R key, by the way, on it. The first time you go in, it goes into build mode. But if you hit space key, you're in your ship core as well. Even though it says no thrusters, as long as you don't have anything other uh, else really connected, you can actually use it and fly around. And if you hold shift and scroll out, you can see it in third person. Uh, so you can kind of like get an idea what it looks like. Um, but yeah, the idea is that you can fly around for quick travel. It goes to the maximum speed, just takes a little longer, etc. As a ship core, uh, if you're trapped or in distress, etc. So the first thing you want to do is start building your ship. So to get back into build mode while in your ship, you just hit space. And you probably want to hold shift to bring your ship to a complete stop before continuing. So what you do is you have power modules. Now the power modules have a really unique and weird feature to them. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by there. So you, you want your power core to be protected the most on your ship. The reason is because if somebody attacks you, their, your core is exposed and they kill it basically it counts down and you'll die because you're in it it's like sort of like a cockpit or whatever you, but you'll die and not only that it'll have a countdown and basically unless they or you come back to your ship and stop the countdown um, the ship will blow up for good that's it goodbye it self destructs basically um, sort of like a hull breach so you like to protect that usually with like armor blocks, have it in the middle of your ship so it's nice and deep, etc. Um, but I'm going to show you how the power system works. When you get started, you can just line up your power any way you like, but you can be a bit more efficient. Um, if you see on the left side, it says we're doing 476 power, 350, 200. So it seems like we're jumping really high. Now let's see what happens when we put this one up. Oh, 476 going up high. 501, 526, it's like, what's going on there? It seemed a little less efficient. Well, that's because they basically designed this game where you have to play like a Tetris game. And that's literally, I think, the reference people play. If you do it like this, for example, you'll actually be doing it great. Like, you'll see the numbers going up decently. And that's sort of the idea of the Tetris game. Like, if you don't see it going basically, I would guess 180 or so power each second, you're basically doing it wrong. Um, and you want to keep an eye on that so you can experiment. So, like, it's doing good right now, right? 1,096. If I put one here, ooh, 1,121 a second. You put it up here, 1,279. You put it here, it won't make a difference, 1,279. So that kind of gives you an idea how to play the game. Uh, in that sort of tetris -y style. Um, and you'll see that no matter what you do, it'll be pretty much the same each time. So we're, there we go, 1472. Or we can go over here and place the cores over here. There we go. And there you go, 1472. Or we can trim them down a bit and put one there as well. And uh, there you go, 1472. So there you go. As long as they're not kind of like touching sideways etc you're not filling it in it tends to work really really well so hopefully uh, my explanation wasn't too too bad and that helps you guys out a bit more on understanding uh, how the ship chorus works so I'm gonna go like this for now this will be my uh, design for today 
So there's my ship core. Now the next thing you want to do is take your thrusters. Uh, thrusters are these ones here, Hyperflux Coil. And you can stack them any way you want. Um, when it comes to other blocks, I know some blocks depend on certain efficiencies, etc. I don't know all of them. I'm only going to give you the one I know the most important, which is the power blocks. Uh, those are things you're going to have to experiment over time. Now, when placing weapons, I have a cannon computer. This is a little bit different. You must link to the cannon. Now, when it you see this, it means it's already linked. If I hit C, it's unlinked. So if I go and place these cannons, basically the cannons or any weapons require a computer for it. When I place it, it's not linked. So what you have to do is make sure it's linked. So when we hit C, it means it's linked. It doesn't matter if I put these weapons over here because they're still linked. It doesn't have to touch them. Um, but that gives you that linkage now. Um, not only that, if you touch it like this, this means it becomes one cannon. If I do it like that, that becomes two different cannons. So that's still two, uh, one cannon there. Um, if I put it up here like this, there you go. Now that's two different cannons. So you kind of have to play around uh, sort of with your design. So that would put those together. So let's put it up like this. And there you go. They're separate cannons now. So now if we were to use the weapons themselves, and we can hit space and try it out, uh, we're going to go ahead and hit T, and you can see your cannon computer, you can drag it down here. These are supports and effects, I have no clue how to use those again, uh, yet, I mean. Um, we'll get into those down the road, but I'm just teaching you the basics to get started so you know how to just you know survive the first day in space. But you can see, there you go, they're shooting. Now if we shoot over here, it's probably not a good idea, we'll get warned cease fire. Um, if you right click, I think they shoot on the outside, like they sort of shoot uh, the way they're spaced. If you left click, usually they space, they shoot right in that little tiny circle as, as accurate as possible. Um, but uh, there you go, yeah, so that's basically your first uh, ship design. Now you do start with armor blocks as well, so you can you know, protect your ship, etc. I personally don't use them that much because I don't really see pirates much, so I haven't really worried about stuff like that, but you probably should worry about that. Um, the next thing you're going to want to look into, the most important part of the game, is a salvager. Now, if you don't get a salvager, it's not a big deal. We can make them on a planet, um, and we'll show you how to get that in the future. But when you first go to the shop, um, you're going to see there's things that you can buy on sale. Now, the the shop is sort of dynamic. There's multiple shops in the world. There's thousands of shops, actually probably millions, because the world is procedurally generated, the universe, right? Except they're very rare. Before 0 0.18, uh, shops were really common. Now they're really rare to find, which is a good thing. I think they should be rare. It's more about making and manufacturing and building your own things rather than, you know, depending on a shop system. So... If you go here, um, you can see that uh, you can buy lots and lots of cool stuff. Well, the first thing I would suggest you go into is support tools. You can buy a salvage computer, and you can buy a sal salvage mod module. And now these are handy. Um, you're going to probably want to buy more power. So uh, the power is under general, actually. Um, and now be beware, these are probably going to be sold out in uh, any server you play. You can see there's a default of 50, but look at that. Look how many I just bought there. Now if another player bought all 30 of those next, that's it. There's none here. Sometimes they get regenerated, I believe, over time, but they're very slow and it's, it's almost painful. Let's just put it that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually stick this something like that I think there you go so I'm just making like sort of a T shape maybe maybe I'll go a little further and it's kinda cool a little further maybe and go upwards here and I wasn't paying attention but I'm pretty sure if you were to look I'm doing it pretty efficiently um, so there you go uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get those new items I got. So the salvage computer, oops, I bought one extra computer. You only need the one computer. And you can place it really anywhere you feel comfortable with. Uh, I'll even place mine right here. And now that I know these are linked because it's yellow right now, and C to relink it if it wasn't, um, we're going to place the salvage cannons here and here. Yeah, we could probably go a little further out this time. There you go. 
And we got two more, huh? I'll leave them for now. So if we go back into our weapons, we hit T, we can take our salvage computer, there you go. And we use it, oops, maybe you should hit two and rather that. Uh, you can see it draining quite a bit of power. Yes, they will drain a hell of a lot of power. Um, this doesn't damage it, does it? Can't hit, okay. So if you go like right click, you can see how they spread out. But if you left click, you see how they center the beam in there. So you get like three times the power kind of thing. So now when we go around the universe, you can look for things like asteroids. Yes, for some reason, and this isn't something I made here, this is just lucky, there's an asteroid here. So we can take this and actually mine up the ores here. And uh, they usually have ores and crystals. Uh, I think there's eight in different ones in total. <laughs> Um, like 80 ores and 8 crystals, or maybe it was 6 or 7, I don't know, but something in those lines. Uh, so basically what a lot of people do is they either go to planets or asteroids. I think asteroids are sometimes easier if you find a nice asteroid belt, but they usually just completely mine the entire asteroid. And over time they'll find more ores, etc. Oh, there's the crystal there, that's the, what it looks like. So basically each asteroid and each planet, not entire planet, but there's disks on the planet, and we'll get to that on the next episode, will have um, unique uh, two ores, like one ore, one crystal usually. Um, and you'll be able to mine it. And you can sell these, I wouldn't suggest selling them, but if you get close enough to the store, you can go ahead and actually uh, sell them. You know, to sell items, you just go to your inventory and you would just basically drag it. Um, so if you're wondering where your items is when you're salvaging it, you don't actually see it. It's like, oh, did I not get my items? It's because by default, it goes into your hotbar if there's space. So that's why you don't see it, so don't freak out. Um, so when we go to the store, we can go to our inventory here and we can go ahead and drag it in here. You can actually see you can make 1,782 credits, not too bad. Though I would suggest saving them if you really, really want to, you can go ahead and uh, sell them. Uh, so yeah, I think that'll uh, round up this episode basically. That'll be good for this episode. And I think the next episode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually visit uh, another planet. So I'm actually gonna fly there. There's uh, faster ways of flying. Um, we just can't really afford it yet, um, but if we go to the shop, I'll show you what it is so you know for the future. Uh, do, 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 do. Shields, weapons, support tools. I think it's under here, isn't it? Actually, nope, I'm wrong. Oh, here it is. A jump drive computer and a jump drive module. So you basically need one of each. More modules are better because it'll charge faster. Um, but uh, this will let you jump around the, the universe a bit. But you need a bit of money before that happens. So yeah, I would say I would suggest once you have your basic ship done and salvager to go to a planet. If you don't have a salvager, definitely go to a planet even more. Um, if you have a salvager, you can go to either an asteroid or planet. But the reason I'm going to say go to a planet first is because that's where you can place down. Uh, things like um, a factory, things like that. And that's what we're going to show you next episode. So I'm going to fly there, and the next episode we'll meet you uh, when we're closer to the planet. So thank you so much for watching this little tutorial on how to get started with StarMade. It'll be a short series, but we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you soon.